I'm Paul Dye, here for Kit Planes Magazine. We've gotten a lot of views for the Angle of Attack video we put out a month or two ago and are happy that it's getting a lot of exposure. Flying AOA is important and something that can lower every pilot's risk. Now, one comment that we've gotten is that when folks go out to experiment with their G3X systems, they aren't getting the same correlation between when the tones come on and what the display shows. And I'll admit that since we didn't record the display when we did the video, we had to simulate it and we didn't get a perfect match. Depending on the system, AOA is implemented in a variety of ways, and while our video shows audio coming in on the high green range of the AOA display, the G3X doesn't actually start tones until you get into the yellow. So we have re-edited the video to better represent the G3X behavior. Now, other systems give tones at lower AOAs, and you can calibrate each system differently. So it's important to calibrate the way that you're going to fly, the way it works best for you, and then to make sure that you understand what your system is telling you. I hope that you find the video educational and that flying AOA lowers your risk. So we talk about AOA all the time, angle of attack, angle of attack indicators. It's actually a very, very simple way to fly, but some people think it's a mystery because they haven't used it. Let's go take a short flight and we'll show it to you. It's a very easy demo. area. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, slow it down to a straight ahead stall and we're going to hear the AOA come on as it comes and when we're on about approach speed it'll be a nice slow beat and it'll get more frenetic the closer we get to the stall. So we're going to pull the power back. We can see the AOA indicator coming on here. Oh, green and now we're getting close to approach. That's a good approach, and now we're going to start slowing her down. And you can hear the AOA getting frenetic. There's red. And there's the brake. Add a little power. We're going to do that again straight ahead. There's approach. Very nice. Palm. Here go, go it. Slow it down to the stall. We're right about 52 knots indicated. So that's straight ahead, 52 knots indicated for the stall. And that was the flaps up. So now we're going to put it into a turn, and we're going to do the same thing, and you'll see that it'll stall at a higher speed, but the same angle of attack. So we're still slow. We'll put it over in a turn. There was a stall at about 68 miles an hour, but again, the same angle of attack. We'll do that once more. There's the stall, and we'll recover. And if we do it in a steeper turn, we'll do an accelerated stall. There we go, and it rolls out on itself. So that one was at about 80 something, and uh, you can see that the stall speed varies with G loading, which can be simulated with, uh, with uh, a turn, and the angle of attack still comes in and does its thing for us. So now we'll go back to the airport and we'll take a look. Now a couple things to think about while we're doing this. We can see that 
there's a nice indicator here on the EFA screen, a visual indicator. Um, and when we're doing stalls, I was actually looking at that a little bit after I'd cleared for traffic. But once we get into the traffic pattern on a visual flight day, a VFR day, we're just not going to be looking here. And that's when the tones become so darn important. The tones are just something independent. And the, and the, the calmer they are, the closer you are to approach speed, and the more frenetic they are, the closer you are to a stall. So we'll head back to the airport here. And we're using right-hand traffic today, which means I'm going to be looking out to the right of the airplane out here when I'm in, my, in the pattern doing turns of uh, downwind to base, base to final. And I'm not. My eyes aren't going to be anywhere near this wonderful display. So the tones are what's really going to be important when, I, when we're landing. State Valley traffic, RV 4 Mike Sierra, 6 miles from the northeast, inbound to enter a right downwind for runway 5. Day. Now, the EFAS in this airplane is calibrated at one aerodynamic configuration. It doesn't know whether the flaps are up or the flaps are down. And uh, we've got that set mostly so that uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give us a good indication on approach with the flaps out. So we'll see how that works when we do this. But some of the uh, more sophisticated uh, EFASs will have, or some of the EFASs will have an actual uh, flap switch, which tells it where the flaps are up or down, and it can have two different calibration tables, one for when the, when the flap's up and one with the flap's down, and then the EFAS knows. But the, the only problem with that is it doesn't really know that the flaps are all the way down. Usually the switch is configured to say the flaps are not up. So once they go down about five degrees, you switch to the alternate table. If you calibrate it to the most conservative method, which is the uh, flaps up case, then it'll always give you a little extra margin uh, in the pattern. State Valley traffic, RV 4 Mike Sierra is entering a right downward runway 5. Full stop. Or slow down to flap speed. We'll go ahead and drop the flaps all the way. for a nice approach speed and you can start to see the green bars showing up on the AO indicator but we're not going to beep yet. When we get out here to do the base uh, or the uh, downward to base turn we'll pull a little bit and we'll probably get a little bit of tone. There's the start of the tone. Yep. That was just momentary. There it comes. State traffic, RV 4 Mike Sierra, right base, runway 5, deep. Final check. And we're a little fast because we're not hearing any tone, but as we roll into the bank, we're going to hear that. And we're lining up to final. Get a nice steady tone. And you can hear it saying, but you're way too slow. Well, that's because we're already on the ground. So, AOA is happy, and as we slow below about 25, 30 knots, the AOA quits. So, oh, that's what that's about. Okay, let's just do a go back out one more time. We've got uh, flaps are up and trims are set. Pumps on, mixture set. Still still on the fullest tank. Everything else looks good. Altimetry, yep, are set. Radio's still up. Now, as we climb out, if we get too steep, we're going to get tones. And that's a really steep climb. But that'll save your bacon if you're trying to get out of a, of a small box canyon and you're climbing like crazy and you get the noise. 
uh, beeping in your ear, you know that uh, unless it gets terribly frenetic, you're going to be okay. And we'll start getting the speed set up here. We're in our descent of uh, midfield. The pump's still on. Prop full in. Mixture is good for our altitude. Got a nice steady slow beep, and I'm dropping flaps. Okay. Gonna trim it out for approach speed. So we're gonna kind of maintain altitude here for a little bit. When I turn the corner and put it in a bank, you'll actually hear it keep it a little more for frenetically. Now, if I'd pulled too hard in that downwind to base turn, it would have gotten even angrier. And you'd hear that tone uh, a lot more. So now, we're descending. Got the angle of attack lowered a bit, or a bit faster. And we're gonna set up for the base to final turn. Stage traffic, RV, 4 Mike Sierra, base to final runway, five, touch and go. And I can fly purely by AOA. All I'm looking at is out the window and I'm hearing those tones. Nice little wheel landing. Now the flaps are gonna go up. Air wheels on the ground, and we're gonna go for takeoff. Eight traffic RV, eight one one, Echo Bravo, three miles to the north, uh, seven thousand. Uh, both maneuver uh, enter midfield, and then put them where you right five. I uh, copy the traffic. And we're going to stay up a little higher this time, a little bit steeper approach, and we'll see what the, what the uh, tones sound like. About 70 works out nice, but that, really I'm not using that, I'm just using the tones. Using the airspeed indicator mostly to make sure I was slow enough to drop the flaps. So here comes the base, uh, the downward to base turn. You can hear the tones coming in as we load things up a little bit. Traffic RV four Mike zero right base runway five full stop. State traffic RV four Mike Sierra turn and final runway five full stop. And again, you can hear the tones, and I'm not looking anywhere near that display because I'm looking out the window. I'm looking where I'm going. I'm looking out to the right. Looking around for that traffic. As we slow down for the flare. There we go. I should mention that at this airport, which is our home airport, we all use the under run uh, to make shorter landings. So uh, it's perfectly legal. And I wouldn't recommend that doing that at a, at a strip that you weren't uh, familiar with. But as you can see, flying by AOA is extremely simple. You've got tones that come on, tell you a relative uh, where you are in the angle of attack uh, regime. Doesn't make any difference whether you're straight and level or banked, loaded up or not. It'll even work inverted for that matter. Um, and uh, the only thing you need an airspeed indicator for is to make sure that you're below the top of the white arc to drop the flaps, and if you've got a retract, to drop the gear. Traffic RV 811 turning right base, 5 full stop. 